Now tuning in to Earbud Media. Audio for everyone. Fuck. Okay, I've been listening to so much Michael Jackson recently. I mean, I always okay. am, but like especially more recently. Now tell so me everything. I listen. <laughs> I I am. I need you to tell listen. Me I need you to listen to me. <laughs> First of all, I love the Jacksons and the Jackson Five and Michael Jackson more than anything. Same. And I re- more than anything. Well, more than Carly Rae Jepsen. Fuck. Still make me choose. I. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you do this to me publicly? You know you're by when. This is stop. <laughs> this is supposed to be my safe space, although it isn't though. But it's very literally you know, your safe space. Yeah, literally the opposite of that. But um, you know, recently I've had to come to terms with uh celebrity deaths that made me vulnerable and sad. And Fair. so I've been writing about my feelings and processes of that and realizing that it, most of it stems from my sort of the way that I process stuff like that is because of how I experienced Michael Jackson's death, if that makes Ooh. sense. So that's yeah. what I've been reliving for the past couple of weeks. Um, Damn. And it's been great and really healthy, and I recommend it. Going into 2018, just, like, really hitting those emotions hard. Really just feeling them, feeling all of them. Every emotion. And back yeah. to Carly Rae Jepsen, emotion. That's bad. You know what I mean? TM, TM. Oh, my God. I... You know, that was a hard... Can I do that again? <laughs> Can I throw this audio <laughs> file away? <laughs> you know, take two. Uh, why don't you just keep talking about Carly Jepsen and I'm just going to not so subtly look up Michael Reed. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> one more time. Sorry. <laughs> um, Sorry, I had trouble hearing you that first time. Can you... <laughs> you know, I'm just going to beat it off this podcast. Oh, just... my God. <laughs> Uh. Do you remember the time? Oh when... my god! <laughs> oh, Cody, how you doing? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> oh, oh, so. See, bad. I was like so great. Like I, I would say like two and a half minutes ago. <laughs> And now I've never felt worse. <laughs> That's the, the impact of Into the Twilight. <laughs> we change lives. We change lives. <laughs> oh, we do the Lord's work. Yeah. How are you? What's up? Okay, so I have some important news for you, uh-huh. Cody. Here on Into the Twilight, I talk a lot of shit about Jacob Black. That's true. And I... I've... <sighs> karma has done me in, Cody. Oh, no. And the universe is telling me that I need to stop talking (laughs) shit on Jacob Black. Oh, no. And I don't know how to personally handle that, Cody. Because, you see, in this past week, after we released our episode on Monday, um, and as usual, here I am talking shit about Jacob Black, there was a wolf spotted in my neighborhood. Oh, no. (laughs) Hey, uh, I heard you were talking shit. Uh, <laughs> want to fucking settle this outside? <laughs> want to just like have a conversation about it, maybe? Um, damn, yeah, did the, you duke it out? What was up? What'd you do? Yeah, the Park and Wildlife Service like <laughs> confirmed that there was a fucking wolf in our neighborhood, <laughs> and it was it wanted to fight me, Cody. <laughs> and he looked me in just... the eyes, and he knew. <laughs> It, uh, it heard my name, it knew I was trying to curse its family, and it, um, <laughs> it, uh, just wanted to talk, you know? <laughs> like, hey, um, man, I don't mean any ill will. Just want to talk, just want to chat. So anyway, I'm still going to talk shit. Oh, of course, but, absolutely. Um, hey, anyway. you survived, that's, that's reason enough to keep going. I survived episode oh where... <laughs> Um, yo, can we talk about I Survived? Because I fucking love that show. (laughs) 
there was a way to get asthma from just like watching a show, not like listening to it, but just like just seeing experiencing it. a show. Like that. <laughs> that would be I fucking love I Survive. Oh my god. Anyway, uh, there was a wolf in my neighborhood, and like I lived through it. So if there's a there's a way to get a bumper sticker for that, you know. Like I didn't see it or anything. But, Where's like, my Nobel Peace it. Prize? <laughs> <laughs> I was in the vicinity of a wolf, sort of. Yeah, who knows? And I'm like, still here, so... I mean, it didn't, like, shit on my car, but, like, it may have, like, looked at me Could in the you water, imagine? Too. I would be fucking scarred. Just took a fucking dump on your car. <laughs> you know I would have filmed that and put it on our Twitter, though. <laughs> that would be so funny. I'd be so pissed, but, like... That'd be great. You should call him back. Hey, you should give me some hits, yeah. Jacob. Thank you. Oh, what if it was Jacob? Oh my god. <laughs> the duality of man. You I can't believe mean? you're even entertaining that idea. <laughs> you don't you don't think Jacob's real? Wait. Gosh, hey. <laughs> oh, this whole time. You didn't Oh no. Oh, I hate to break Oh, Allie. So wait. Cody, what do you I I actually, Wait, podcast. I have another phone call I actually have to take. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> fuck you. Um, do you Damn, to fuck. All right, shit. <laughs> Collaborate team, my ass. Um, <laughs> okay, let's talk about these current events. Let's do it. Um, you are very passionate about some of these ones involving our pets, so could you please discuss? Sure, I'll give a, a little rundown of because we had a lot of our pets news that was not good time related, literally in the slightest. It's so refreshing. I just it's like the sun came out and my heaven has risen and it was great. Everything is great. We're here. Who's making the religious fucking? Listen, and my Christian podcast, of course. We gotta start doing this because there actually is like a good Christian fun <laughs> like that actually exists. Listen, I didn't um, say the name, so it's fine. <laughs> we can't yeah, get sued Kevin, yet. Kevin Porter, you owe me fifty bucks now. So shit. Well, you said his name. Now we owe him a million dollars. Yeah. Thanks for doing us in. Damn it. Anyway, Robert Pattinson, our boy, Please. is in a new movie um, called Damsel, which is premiering at Sundance. As it is happening right now. Oh, I'm so excited for Dan. And it is, it's just like your typical, like, Western fantasy. Like, Mia Wasikowska's in it, and, because she's never not been in a period piece, I think. It's just, so real. That seems like that's the real shit that's happening. But yeah, he's, he's just him really just exploring the Wild West, and also a very small horse. <laughs> and a very small horse. Very small horse. There's something so enjoyable to me about you talking about movies. Is yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, I do that often, so that's kind of my thing, so. So, great. I, um, I can do it whenever you want, whenever you want. Follow me on Letterboxd, letterboxd.com slash Discord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Arpats' hair in this movie is a look. Yeah, it's a nice, For like, sure. you know, cropped center part, good boy you know, it's got a lot it's of a lot. nice facial hair going on here. Yeah, it's a lot. It's definitely a lot smoother than we're used to with the Edward Cullen books. So yeah, or even curious. the good time, like, rugged fucking A, blonde hair, and also True. willy-nilly, and then bushy-ass fucking beard, you know? Yeah, I'm very curious to see how all the Twilight scenes on Tumblr take this, because it'll probably be a lot of, like, Edward Cullen, Jasper, sure. like, like Texas era, <laughs> like kind of things that we'll see a lot of like manips of that. So I'm very curious about that, and I'm also just very excited about the horses. Very excited. I love a good Personally. horse flick. Also, um, I think it's important to note that his character's name is Samuel Alabaster, which is definitely a vampire. Like, that's 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 a vampire. Yes, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> also, I love that his initials are saw. <laughs> saw. Um, so that's great. Could you please do me the honor of discussing this next Arpat? God, <laughs> where do I begin? I've really been like evolving, revolving myself in this Robert Pattinson discourse. Has been but also <laughs> evolving. Also evolving. I'm a new man. Because this <laughs> article from W Magazine literally changed my life. And I'm a new, <laughs> a new person. 
Lynn Hirschberg, which I will probably attest is one of the greatest interviewers of our time, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. Really did a great profile um, on W Magazine. Robert Pattinson considers, considers himself a sex professional, sort of, which are already one of the Aren't greatest all, titles you know? of 2018. <laughs> yeah, yes. Hi, welcome to masculinity, you know? Hey. Like, that is absolutely out of context in the best way. And this interviewer is just, like, a, a chef's kiss. Mwah, so beautiful. And her so job good. is really killing it. The first question being around Halloween costumes, in which, like, what was your first Halloween costume or what was your favorite oh, Halloween so costume? Good. To which Robert Pattinson responded, I can only remember dressing up in my friend's mom's clothing, having the interview be like, hey, so that means you went as a woman, like you just dressed up as a woman. And he was like, no, not a woman, not just a woman. And I quote, it was kind of a sort of a Charlie Chaplin-ish kind of demon. So... I just... That's my mood board. That's my goals. That's my 2018 goals. Um, I yeah, can't wait for you all to follow is... me on this journey. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that it definitely, like, when I imagine your aesthetic, that definitely is... <laughs> all of those keywords, you know, all of those keywords come up. Yep. That is definitely you in a mood. Yeah. You know what I mean? God. <sighs> That's so God. It's very good. good. It's very good. It's a good piece. I recommend it. It was good. Thank he also so talks much. about oh. one of his, like, first red carpet things for one of the Harry Potter movies, and it was the first time that, like, someone let him, like, borrow clothes. like a des- And the outfit, verbatim, leather pants and these, like, red cowboy boots and a velvet jacket. <laughs> Just imagine a tiny, tiny Robert Pattinson so in leather man. pants, red cowboy boots. And a velvet jacket. That is like all of the senses. That's <laughs> all the textual <laughs> experiences. It is. It's visceral. You can like feel it, that look. Yeah. Already. Oh, Robert. Also, they had a. a I, sorry. This is just. This is a well of information in this article. No, I need you to continue it for always. He please. had a dog. Her, his first pet's name was Patty Pat Pattinson. <laughs> <laughs> she was a West Highland white terrier named Pat, Patty, and went by Wait. Patty Pat Pattinson. <laughs> oh, Robert. Oh. You beautiful soul. You beautiful, never change. And I don't think he has, is the amazing thing about it. I love it so much. That interview was amazing. It truly is the epitome of a chef's kiss. Thank yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Yeah. That was it. There was a brief thing about k that we got from a Just Jared uh, article. Our most where, reliable source. Honestly, the, the it carries us through this show, I would say. Where <laughs> um, Demi Lovato was playing a Who Would You Rather game, I think, on Ellen. <laughs> um, <laughs> and... She had to choose between Nick Jonas and K Stu, and of course she chose K Stu. Obviously. And um, people are saying that it's because she needed to stir up drama between her and Nick Jonas. So of course she chose K Stu instead. Um, but I think that she chose the best option, personally. Yeah. And that's about it. Other than that, K Stu's living her best life. Hell and that's yeah. all we can hope for. Proud of her. Yes. So we got. A plethora of questions. So many questions. So many questions. And for the most part, they all centered around a similar theme. I guess the people were inspired by the Fever Dream TED Talk that was last episode. (laughs) In which Allie really (laughs) went hard in the paint of the Twilight (laughs) and Jersey Shore discourse. And so now we must settle the debates, every debate. Of which Twilight character belongs in which, in every single pop culture anything. That's now our job for the rest of time now, so. Yes. And I guess you're welcome. Yeah. First of all. First of all. (laughs) And so we got a plethora of kind of TV show and movie character suggestions. So we're going to just kind of lightning round these. Yeah. And kind of go through them for the Collins that way. So 
I guess the best way to do this is just to name the colons and then kind of go through the the eras and go from it that way. So Emmett, as a Star Wars character, the suggestion that we got from this question asker was as Chewbacca. I do like that. I love that a lot. But I also I- really like him as Han Solo. Okay, same. I think that's... I love that. Mm. And also, like, they're bros, so, like... <gasps> oh, my God. No. Emmett is Han Solo. Jasper is Chewy. <laughs> now, okay, that <laughs> personally speaks to me because yeah. something about Jasper as a furry... Oh, my God. <laughs> kind of... Oh, wait. Wouldn't of fucking Jacob be Chewy then, I guess, technically? We're talking about the colons. Uh, Everybody asked about the colons. Fine. You're right. I'm sorry. God. Fuck. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you're bad. God. Um, <laughs> I fucked up so bad. So, okay. That is great. Yeah. I love that a lot. Now, Emmett, because we got another one here. So, mm. Emmett as one of the magic school bus characters. Oh, now, let God. me just fucking look up. I fucking remember the magic school bus character. <laughs> Um, who the fuck are all of these people? Was it Carlos? See, here's the thing. My original plan, I had two in mind for Magic School Bus. One was Carlos, and that was gonna be Jacob, but he's not a Cullen, and I'm an idiot. But, but honestly, Carlos is the one that literally everyone is, like, yelling at, because they're like, you you silly boy, stop fucking everything up. Oh, it could be Edward, too. That is correct. I think, um, I'm trying to remember, but I think Ralphie is very, uh, Emmett sensibilities. I just, why did I just Google Ralphie and think I would get get it? Okay, Ralphie is definitely Emmett just from looks alone. Absolutely, that's what I'm saying, you know what I mean? He's like the... He has his hat backwards, he's chilling in all these photos, yeah. Yeah, he's like the class clown, kinda, and like... That's decided just hanging to me. Out. Yeah. Now we're supposed to be talking about Harry Potter characters. Yeah. So Emmett would definitely be Victor Crumb. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like, aren't they the same person? Yeah. You know what I mean? And Parson Wreck. Um, he's obviously Andy. Obviously. Like, obviously. The you fact know what I mean? that the person, like, no, no shade to the people who send us great questions. However, the fact that they even considered that Jacob would be Andy, it's like, no, Emmett has Andy in the bag forever. That's it. They are the I same. I love, I love Jacob. Like, I love him. I also want to lovingly shake him. But Jacob is Mark Brandenowitz, and if you don't (laughs) fucking agree with that, you're wrong. That's very good. Fuck Mark Brandenowitz. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway. And also, fuck Jacob. He sucks. (laughs) Please stop saying that. Another wolf might come to my house. (laughs) (laughs) If anything, they would come to me, and I'll fucking fight him. Don't even (laughs) question it. (laughs) It's too cold there. I'll punch a wolf. I'm not scared. (laughs) <laughs> Cody, I'll punch a wolf. Crap. Um, <laughs> That's what they call me. I ain't afraid of no wolves. Oh um, my god. Uh. Okay, so Jasper. Okay, Star Wars, Chewbacca. Great. Obviously. Magic that great school... head of hair, are you kidding me? Yes. Magic school bus. Oh, I'm running out Who of people. Who else are I these know. people? No idea. I, we, could, we could skip it. The only other okay. magic school bus character that matters is Miss Frizzle, and I have opinions, so we'll get there. Great. Okay, Harry Potter. Is it bad if I say Neville? He's kind of got some Neville. Why is that the first things that came up to me? He's kind of like a Seamus, don't you think? Like a oh, little shit. bit. Just setting shit on fire all the time. That's true. <laughs> you that's know. That's true. That's a good one. I love that. But also just wants to be included so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's good. I love that. Good Let idea. me in. Okay. Let me play. Come on. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. And Parkston Brett. Oh. I mean, he's definitely April. <laughs> I was thinking Rosalie for April, though. Oh, shit. They might have to fight it out. Okay, wait. No. No, okay. No, Jasper could be... What's the fucking news anchor's name? Roll. Oh. Or John Ralphio. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> yep. That'd be a good one. Okay. All right, fucking Ed Weird. This Ed is Weird. This is Ed Weird. Uh, Ed okay, Weird is obviously Weird. Luke, just sad space boy. I was thinking Kylo. Oh, but also Kylo, also sad space boy. So like <laughs> because that's like the ultimate ironic. No, hero, that's you true. Know I mean? We're, that's more relevant because of our previous conversations. I mean, Harry Potter, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, um, I mean, I wonder. Our pets, like, Ooh. 
I mean, he's not, Edward is not Cedric, though, is the thing. No, no, he's not. And he's fucking Draco, if I'm being honest. <laughs> but, like, Arpad's played Cedric, so, like, that's an easy choice. Yeah. Okay, Parks and Rec, though. I'm very interested in your opinions on this one. Oh, God. Oh, I don't know. I don't I'm know. I'm imagining someone, well, if we're going by, like, public opinion, it would be the fucking person that Louis C.K. played. Um, oh, fuck, yeah. <laughs> like, but I'm, it's, no, Pretty Happily is too pure of a choice, but, like, yeah. just, just the cadence of it and the way that Edward speaks. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. But that's just a wild card choice. There's no one in Parks and Rec that's, like, everyone in Parks and Rec, no, regardless of how happy they are, like, they're all too pure. Right. Um, yeah. For Edward's like, no! Oh my God, he's Orin. What am I talking about? <laughs> he's Orin. Of course he is. The whole time under our noses. What was I thinking? Oh my Ooh. God. Okay, Carlisle, Star Wars. Uh. uh... He was pure enough. <laughs> Part of me but wants like, to just also... say like. Padma or Leia. Or Leia. <laughs> yeah, but, he, but he's also, like, not the main right. person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Why am I thinking Obi-Wan? Obi-Wan is a great choice. Obi-Wan, you're my only hoe. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, well. Oh, Harry Potter. I'm listen. thinking. No, you can't think. You already know. Daddy Malfoy. Oh, shit. Yes. Obviously. Okay. okay, in Parks and Rec. Uh, Ben Wyatt? <gasps> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's such a good choice. My son. Okay. All right, Esme. Ah, fuck. Star Wars. Oh, fucking... Well, I guess General Organa. Adult land. I mean, yeah. 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 Hell yeah. <laughs> Space mom. Harry Potter. <laughs> McGonagall? Yeah. I'm down with that. I was either thinking, yeah. No, or even yeah, okay. fucking um, Molly Weasley. <gasps> yeah, no, she's Molly Weasley. What am I fucking thinking? Okay. I'm God. so wrong. I'm so, uh. literally, I apologize. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, okay, and Parks and Rec. Um, uh, Donna? No. No, Rosalie's Donna. Um, no, okay, you know who she is? She's Donna's significant other. The one that's the teacher who's, like, really nice to everybody. Oh, yeah. Yep. The, the, yeah. Key of Keen Peel. Yes. 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 Okay. Great. Okay. Alice. Um, Star Wars? Where? Yoda? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. I like that. <laughs> okay. Harry Potter. I mean, she's Well, first of all, Luna. she's obviously- Yes, yeah, she's Luna. She's also Miss Frizzle. I will take that to my fucking grave. Yes, I agree. Parks and Rec. Uh, I mean, she's Anne. Tom. <laughs> she's Tom. Okay. Right? Yeah. She's Tom. Yeah. Yeah. She's Tom. Okay. Rosalie. Star Wars. How could Rosalie even fit in? This? She's all the stars. You know what uh, I mean? Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know that one. I might need listener help from. Yeah. We're gonna crowdsource this. Up. Yeah. Okay, Hogwarts, she's Fleur, right? Yeah. She's Fleur de la Cour? Yeah. Right? She's got that elegance. Yeah. Okay, and then Parks and Rec, she's Donna. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, God. Okay, Bella, great. Um, oh, fuck. <laughs> so not done. Oh, fuck me. Okay. I think she's very Padme. I think so, too. Hey, everyone. This is Cody, editing this episode. Upon further reflection, the answer is obviously BB-8. I'm so sorry for letting everyone down, but it's obviously BB-8. Fucking Harry Potter. He's uh, just, like, almost dying. All this- fuck. Okay, well, I mean Harry, but, like, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> I... So I feel like Steph wants to make her Hermione, but, like, she's not. You know what I mean? She's not Hermione. No. no. Ron? <laughs> oh, my God. Ron's always I mean, kind of dying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I feel like she's in the back of the class somewhere. Oh, yeah. Know? Yeah. She's somewhere there. She's trying her best. She's trying her best. Okay, no, and I have the perfect one for Parks and Rec. Okay. She's the fucking journalist. 
<sighs> yes. She's that girl. Yeah. Yeah. Who's like trying to date everybody, but like unsuccessfully. Yeah. Okay, great. Perfect. That was great. All right. Would you like to discuss Breaking Dawn with me? Hell yeah. Okay, perfect. So this week we have chapters 29 and 30 and things start to get a little hectic. Yeah, it's a little real. Plus, I don't know, I I, I guess maybe you don't know because you don't have the, the actual book with you. That's fair. But we've gotten into the 30s and we, we're going to get to the end of the book. We don't get into the 40s for chapters. Whew. So we're nearing the end here. I know, my audiobook is like, you got four hours left. I'm like, ugh, that's nothing. It's a breeze. <laughs> okay, so chapter 29 is defection. And with where we left off last week, Alice and Jasper are still gone, girl. Yep. And the Collins are grief-stricken <laughs> as much as stone can Honestly, be. so so was I. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's really sad. I miss them. I know, I miss them too. They're real to me, so oh, right. it's hard. Okay. <laughs> well, hey. But... <laughs> it's rude. Um, they're real in my heart. Oh my god. My heart's? What the? Where <laughs> am I? <laughs> Accidental slip there. Anyway, Allie's been um... a cryptid the whole time. Why does nobody listen to me? <laughs> anyway. You're all sleeping on this. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> so we leave off exactly where last chapter ended. Um, it's still the evening, um, and this chapter starts off with the morning, and Bella's still having a crisis. Understandably so. Sure. We find out that Bella and Edward have been staring at each other all night, which would be sexy and, like, totally romantic, except yes. for they're, <laughs> um, they're upset. So... It's not. It's super sad and all these things that Stephanie is trying to convey, but not, sort of. Right. Um, so, during all this, nobody has been speaking um, because they're struggling to understand what's happening, but also Ray has basically been. The sure. only thing that Edward says after all this time is just Alice. Like, he doesn't even, like, is it? He just says, like, flat. <laughs> um, which, oh, romance and drama and wow, Intrigue. Stephanie, you're, you're, you're conveying so much. Wow. Um, and so all this happens and they're all super sad and everything's great. So anyway, they're trying to think about what's happening, right? And they're trying to figure out Alice's motives for what's happening. Hmm. They kind of decide if, like, the Votori is involved and how they're involved and all this stuff and... <laughs> Emmett gets pissed, right? He's like, right. fuck this. Like, ah. um, and he, he like starts cursing and he gets up to his feet and Jacob, who's been asleep this whole time, he like instinctually gets scared. So he jumps up and he's like ready to fight and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, <laughs> they all get flustered and the family all runs out <laughs> to see what's going on. So they... They all leave. Jacob stays, of course, with Renesmee. In a shocking turn of <sighs> <laughs> Well, hey. I mean, someone should stay with her, right? Um, I, she's literally anyone else could have, though. That's true. But she's still a baby. Um, she's an adult baby. Um, not like Jacob, who she's is- She's a very a long baby. <laughs> <laughs> she's an adult baby. Jacob's <laughs> a baby adult. Somehow. Ah, it's fuck. meant to be. No, um, no, no. I don't agree. Hey. Listen, I don't agree with it. <laughs> That's not my kink, does. but... <laughs> and apparently it's somebody's, which is God. gross. God. So anyway, the whole family leaves and runs off to the woods, How? and they're following Alice and Jasper's scent. What ends up happening is they go into the Quilly territory where Sam is there, and in very much Amazing Race style, <laughs> he's there with a note. Um, <laughs> to their next checkpoint. Um, <laughs> but instead of that... It's just a note from Alice. And in that, it's from a torn off piece of a novel. Uh, <laughs> of, in a shocking turn of events, another novel. Uh, uh, Stephanie. We, we love it. English read. literature. Yes. And it's not just any novel. Of course, it's The Fucking Merchant of Venice. And it's like. That's yes, the full title. <laughs> we get it. It's, yes, I did put that in our notes. <laughs> um, um, because, My favorite classic like, novel, The Fucking Merchant of Venice. 
<laughs> well, it's like, yes, yeah, Stephanie, we get it. You were an English major. Yes, we know you love Billy Shakes. Like, shut up. Um, anyway, so it's a note from Alice, and it's super sad. And it's like, don't look for us. All this stuff. Get everybody you can find. We love you. All this stuff. Like, um, it's not you. It's me. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> stop. Um, and they're all super shaken by it. All this stuff. It's super sad. Right. And Sam's kind of pissed. Right. Carla has this explanation for her. Because Sam's like, why don't you go after her? It's your family. <laughs> And Carlo and Edward kind of explain, that's not how we do it here. Right. We're not bound by blood. They are able to chase their bliss and everything like this. During all this, Esme's crying, but vampires don't cry tears, so it's just these, like, silent, shaking sobs, which is more painful for me to, like, I don't know. I, I don't want Esme sad. So Yeah, never. God. Uh, like, please don't. But also that, like, just the idea that she's just, like, quietly just saw, like, ugh, please don't. Mm-hmm. Um, so, anyway, Edward and is having this fight with Sam and any, everything is just happening and I'm just <laughs> super emotional about it. Um, during all this, Bella is, her world is shifting a little bit because she's always thought about the Cullens together, but then she's having to remember that they, you know, they all came together. Carlisle right. built this family. That's, you know. He is the sim and, leader of this. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Oh, that's such a good way to put this it. This was all a simulation. <sighs> Carlisle. Please don't. What the hell? I will have an extra. Nothing is real. Nothing is real. Please don't Truman show me right now. Oh my Um, god. (laughs) So, she starts thinking about it, right? Like, of course families are built in the way that she has traditionally thought about it, like a nuclear family in her sense of the word. But for vampires, they're, they're created and they're brought together by will. And so for her to have this split together, she's suddenly thinking, like, we're doomed. There's no hope at all. Like, what do we do now? And... So everybody's reacting to this grief in different ways, right? Mm-hmm. So Esme's sad. Emmett is ready to fight. <laughs> Edward's kind of reacting to it in denial and being upset about it. Carlisle's trying to plot. Um, and so it's very indicative of all their characters, which is kind of the one thing that Stephanie gets right, is she's when it comes to these interactions where all of the family is together, she kind of gets it. Right. But everything else. No, yeah, <laughs> not a thing. So they all go back and they head back. But on their way back, Bella's like, hmm, something about that book is giving me, like, my bat signals. Literally. Oh, my God. Wee, 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 wee. <laughs> um, like, my bat signals are tingling. And this is, this is one of my favorite things, right? Like, throughout this whole series, we've been talking about this about Bella. Like, She's an Ocean's Eleven motherfucker. Like yeah. She, Her brain she has, is magic. She's well, resourceful. She, she's cunning. And she has really good instincts mm-hmm. with stuff like this. And so something about it is, is intriguing her, and her instincts are being pinged. And so on the way back, she's like, Edward, go back to the house. I'm going to do something. And he's like, huh? <laughs> and he's like, no. No, I can't. I can't. Uh, uh. Um, okay. And Who, so, me? Yeah. <laughs> and so she goes back to their cottage at, because she realizes that the Merchant of Venice page smelled like her. <laughs> it had her Victoria's Secret <laughs> spray on it. <laughs> and so she goes back to the cottage to see what's going on. During all that process, Edward couldn't leave her alone. He's like, I can't, I couldn't let you walk away from me. And during all of that, Bella's kind of thinking, like, knowing Alice, and if they were in a hurry, she could have put this note on anything. Like, she could have put it on a boulder or a tree trunk. Like, she could have put it on post-it notes, anything. So, like, why her book? What about that is a significance? And it's like, yes, Bella, yes, follow your instincts. Something about this is important. So she goes to the cottage, she finds the book, and she sees, like, yep, my instincts are right. 
the book says destroy this. I'm a and fucking genius. It, yes. And it's like, yes, Bella, yes. <laughs> so ah! <laughs> you're so smart. So in the book, there's a name and an address for someone in Seattle. Mm-hmm. So, of course, like she's a fucking vampire. So she stores that. In <laughs> Road a trip. In a break. I know. <laughs> Saving um, that for later. And my favorite thing about all this is she remembers it, right? And then mm. she throws the book in the fire. <laughs> like, and so Edward's like, what are you doing, Bella? That's literature. <laughs> like, we could have read this? that. <laughs> I know. That was a really important book. Mm. Um, I, so. I, I want a vampire that. divorce. <laughs> I know. That's great. And <laughs> um, and so I love that she's like, well, it just seemed appropriate. And he's like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's good. Um, <laughs> I respect that's... your your lo- your need to make it dramatic. That seems legit. Yeah, um, that's fine. And so she's like, well, that note didn't make me hopeful at all. Like, what what about this is she trying to tell me? Mm-hmm. So great. Um, as they get back to the house, they've noticed that everybody has changed. Um, she's noticed particularly that Rosalie's in a different outfit, which means shit's about to go down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> costume changes mean important shit in this yeah. household. Which, honestly, fair. Absolutely. When I changed for the day, something's about... When I changed from, like, comfy clothes to getting ready clothes, mm. like, it's that's a That's a new deal. woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's fair. So they're getting ready to leave. We find out that, you know, they've taken heed to Alan's advice. They're going to, the families have split up into pairs and they're going to travel the world and they're going to bring witnesses to the house. They're going to have them introduce themselves to Renesme. They're going to fight or at least become witnesses to mm-hmm. the guard. And that's great. But also that means there's going to be a lot of vampires and forks. Yeah. So there's some consequences to that. Um, Carlisle is giving instructions to Edward and Bella, Renesme and Jacob, who are all staying, of course. So the Denali clan is coming first. So they're, Carlisle specifically is giving instructions to have them, you know, try not to react the way that Arena did and not join <laughs> The Volturi side and to find out more about Eleazar and his backstory there. Um, just what a great name. Can we just discuss I how fucking sick that name is? Eleazar and Carmen are Ugh. two of my favorite vampires. My firstborn is going to be named Eleazar. <laughs> like, it's just, it's such a beautiful name. There's so many vowels. Uh, Ugh. 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 <laughs> like pour one out for Eleazar, you know what uh, I mean? Pour one out for Eleazar and Chicago West, the only names that matter. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, oh, oh, Eleazar, Chicago West, you know what I mean? I'm sure they get along. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of like a whole name. Oh fuck! I mean, they would. Kimmy absolutely would do that. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Damn. Damn, Daniel. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. <laughs> so, anyway, Bella is still mm. very interested in Jay Jenks, which, shitty name, you know? Like, yeah. Move from like, Eleazar to Jay Jenks. <laughs> it's like an uh, even shittier Jar Jar Banks, like. <laughs> Jar Jar Banks? Oh, yeah. It's like, how can we make this worse? Yeah. I got it. Um, I got it. Yeah, that's true. So, during all this, we find out that um, Jacob has sort of been catching Renesme up on everything that's going on. Here's what um, you missed on Glee. Literally, I can't believe that it's been all this time and I still use that in daily vernacular. It's embarrassing, honestly, and I hate it. I hate it, but it's so applicable. Yeah, name me something that will get the same effect and also be just as useful. Nothing. And then I'll use it instead. Yeah, but, but until, until that then, day. <laughs> it works so well. Yeah. And that's what you're starting with. Oh, fuck me. Like, it works so well. Okay. So, we find out that it's just, it's going to be a a difficult adjustment, right? Mm -hmm. Especially for Jacob, the fact that we've got all these vampires here. So, during all this time when, like, 
Edward is explaining to Jacob what's going on, the fact that he probably shouldn't be around, um, and that Renesmee should be staying in the cottage while they're introducing all this stuff. Bella is trying to absentmindedly <laughs> <laughs> look up Jay Jenks on the computer. And <sighs> Stephanie goes into, like, 14 pages of explaining how this goes. It's like... She's inventing the internet. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> First, so it bad. was God. <laughs> like, it goes for, like, a, a whole fucking sequence of her just being, like, my fingers <laughs> going across the keyboard. Let me type this dude's name and let me find out where he is and what he's doing. There's What's a whole that? page of her describing tendons. It, like, oh, oh. <laughs> stop it, yeah. Stephanie. Hey, Steph, cut that shit out. Literally, stop. Where was your editor? You know what I mean? <laughs> God damn it. Um, so she does all this, right? She finds it. She goes into three pages of explaining a step by step tutorial of how to delete your internet browser history. <laughs> so, thank you for the fucking reference, I guess. Thank you Never for educating, I guess, all the youth that were <laughs> reading this for the first time. That's true. That's true. Maybe it was actually a really helpful This was a textbook. <laughs> Literally. They, they use this book in typing classes. It's like, this is it. Oh God. This is how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> you, welcome to Breaking Dawn, where you learn about how to delete your browser history and also how to kink shame for the first time. Yeah. Um, a lot of valuable lessons can be learned from this novel. I think. True. So, Renesmee goes into Bella's arms, and we find out how worried Renesmee is. Mm. Um, she's aged about 10 years in just how nervous she is for everybody, especially Alice, which mood, yep. same for Nesme. And the chapter ends with Bella deciding, um, that she's, as she's like crying for Alice in a way that vampires can cry, which is just like, I'm saying I'm crying, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and... She is deciding by the end of the chapter that her only goal is to save Renesme, and that that is what she decided that Alice gave her is a way to save Renesme, and mm-hmm. that's really all that matters to her. And I was like, "Damn, Bella, what a glow!" Wow. And that's that's how chapter twenty nine ends. Bye bye. So we move on to chapter thirty, irresistible, and I definitely had. A flashback to I don't I mean maybe you didn't but I definitely <laughs> had a flashback to like all the songs that I listened to growing up oh called yeah called Irresistible oh yeah so that was just a that was just a thing that I felt like I needed to say that's fair um, that's valid your feelings are valid here <laughs> Thank you so much. Of course. So, that's great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we established okay. that 60 episodes here. Yeah. Hi, welcome to In the Twilight. Your feelings are valid. <laughs> hey, everyone. Um, so, so just an update. Alice and Jazz, still gone, girl. Yeah. What the fuck are we even doing here? What is the point? <laughs> that's fair. Um, so, during all this, Bella's kind of having a crisis. Yeah. She mood. wants to know... <laughs> Um, (laughs) um, she wants to know where Alice and Jasper are she wants to know how to find Jay Jinx she wants to know what the fuck the note was about she wants to know with all these vampires coming both good and bad how's she gonna fight how's How's she she gonna gonna fight like she has so many questions no one's answering them No, and that's not okay to her which is fair yeah um, there's literally a point at the beginning of this chapter where she says, so many answers I needed, but I did not get the chance to ask my questions. Uh, That's, hi, welcome to my life. <laughs> like, <laughs> that is my life in a nutshell. Nobody, hey, I have so many questions. Just let me ask my questions. You don't even need to answer them yet. Just, hey. Just let, let me, me say let them. Me, let me just say. Just, hey, can I talk? Like, hey. hey. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um... So, during all this, Bella's just really anxious, she's really concerned, and Edward feels like, hey, Bella, I know that you're really anxious right now. You know what would really help that? Just some sex. 
yeah, let's just fuck it out, my dude, you know? <laughs> um, which, I mean, yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but also, yeah. do you know what she really wants right now, Edward? Some she really wants to just ask her questions. Just some communication, really, like. And what just... a fucking turn of events for the two of them, you know? Ugh. Is him not understanding that she just wants to communicate, and he's just taking it a whole different direction, you know? Yeah. God damn it. Shit. But anyway, she gets that good dick. And I mean, I'm proud sort of her, of... but also, I, at what cost, you know? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it, it helps her for the moment. Yeah, a little clear also... head for a bit, but she still has got head. She still has questions. It'll clear his head for a bit. Hey. Um, Hey. Who's bad? Um, <laughs> stop! <laughs> I'm never gonna stop. I need you to stop. <laughs> no, now that I know that I'm allowed to make Michael Jackson references, I'm never gonna stop making. What do you mean you're allowed? Like, what <laughs> did you think it was like in this podcast? Cancelled. Now that I know that they're relevant oh. to your interests, I'm never gonna stop making Michael Jackson references. Oh my god, you're ridiculous. <sighs> it's great. Um, okay, so during all this, they they bone down, right? And I was like, <laughs> sleep now? Let's just cuddle. And she's like, no, Edward, I need you to teach me how to fight. And he's like, I want Shit. a punch real bad. I just... Let me punch! <laughs> <laughs> just let me break some bones. <laughs> and he's like... Bella, just cut. Just Come on, can, I, can I be the little spoon, please? <laughs> yeah. I just want to be tender. We never hang out anymore. We never, like, just, like, talk and, like, lay next to each other. You know what I well, mean? Well, they never talk. Absolutely. <laughs> no, they never talk. <laughs> <laughs> you always just want to, like, fight. I just, like, why can't we just lay down and hug? <laughs> I'm feeling a little undervalued in our relationship. Bella, I feel like you just used me for my body. <laughs> she's just like breaking things in the house. She's, she's like just punching so bases. <laughs> if you won't teach me how to fight, I'll just fight the whole house. <laughs> Break this house, I swan to John. Um, <laughs> Don't fucking text me. <laughs> the problem is, is she probably doesn't mean to. She's just so accidentally strong. <laughs> like, she just like tenderly like tries to open the door and just throws it off the hinge. <laughs> yes. God, they had to replace their fridge so many times because she's just getting <laughs> ripping off the goddamn door. <laughs> she's just trying to like eat peanut butter all the time and just keeps breaking spoons. <laughs> Bella, uh, you're so strong. You're so stop. strong. <laughs> and she keeps thinking that he's saying it sarcastically, but he's just being so <laughs> sincere. Bella, please. You're breaking <laughs> this whole thing. Bella, baby, you're so <laughs> strong. And she's like, stop saying that. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So she just really wants to be taught how to fight. Like, Yeah, that's all she wants. Herself. And he, Edward is like, no, please stop. Like, in the, at the end of the day with the Volturi, he's convinced that it won't do any good mm -hmm. because the guard has so many superpowers. Right. Like, Alec and Jane have, like, offensive and defensive powers. Right. Like, some Space Jam bullshit that, like... Oh, my God. <laughs> they're gonna... <laughs> you know what I mean, though? <laughs> I do. Um, it's just, I love that... That was a reference that you made on our podcast. I have so many feelings about Space Jam. Absolutely. I watched it so much as a kid. It's. I think it's still on Hulu. We should watch it together. <laughs> it honestly traumatized me a lot as a kid. Like, the monsters were so big. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is that? Like, like excuse the, me? Like, Space Jam was more scary to me than Monsters, Inc. Wow. Because I was like... I mean, both objectively not scary. <laughs> Even for children. Okay, one, objectively very scary. Oh my god. Because you just are walking on a golf course and just fall into a hole. Like, oh my god. objectively scary. <laughs> anyway, so he's telling about all the Votori's superpowers, right? 
And <laughs> Bella's like, okay, that's more reason that I need to be able to defend my family. And Edward literally says, liter- like, literally, <laughs> he says, please, Bella, let's not talk about this. Ugh. So he doesn't want to do this. So anyway, there's all this stuff. He starts talking about, like, he explains as they get to the house. Edward's explained to Jacob more information about the Volturi. And Bella's like, fuck the Volturi. Fuck the man. And she's starting to get all pissed. She's breaking <laughs> the vampire man. things in the house. Esme is gone, but, like, calls out of nowhere and is like, please stop breaking things in my house. Like, I love you. You're my fa- you're my favorite daughter. I love you so much. Please stop breaking things in my house. Please, thank you. I have one rule. That's all I want. <laughs> I, this is my favorite, China. Please stop. I let you guys um, fuck for days in for my home. For literal days. For, in my home. And that, that's fine with me. Just don't break my fucking I, China. That's all I want. You can give hand jobs anywhere in this house. Please don't break my favorite China. <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> um, so one of the things that Edward says is that, like, the Volturi is the foundation of peace mm-hmm. there. And Belle's like, Sorry? They've tried to kill me how many times? This is not true. Hmm. So, anyway, um, she's holding Renesme as the Denali clan gets there, right? Because they're the first people to arrive. Right. And during this, Renesme's very anxious because she's reading the room, as you do. Jacob yeah. never does it. No. No. She's an adult baby. He's a baby adult. And <laughs> he gets, like... One, at least one of them gets it. And one of the really sad things is she says, like, this is all my fault. Which, like, first of all, you're a baby. <laughs> and you're saying that. Which, like, hurts my heart. Yeah. And all of them have to be like, uh, no, 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 no. But, like, the fact that she feels that right. is really fucked up. So, anyway, the Denali clan gets there. They're doing all their pleasantries, right? And Edward is trying to slowly introduce this of, like, Let's play a sensory game. What do you hear? <laughs> um, what do you smell? All this stuff. So that by the time that Bella walks down with Renesme, they don't seem shocked. But of course, they're scared out of their minds. Right. Because they have this experience with immortal children in their family. Ba ba Understandably so. Now... One of my favorite things about this interaction is all of them freak out. Tanya (laughs) freaks out. Kate freaks out. Eleazar freaks out and, like, throws himself in front of Carmen. Very cute, by the way. (laughs) But it's just like, no, we're not dealing with this. And what I love about this interaction is Carmen is intrigued. Because she knows she can hear the heartbeat Mm. and see Renesmee and is like, all right, I'll try this. Fuck this. (laughs) And is interested. So she is willing to hear them out and is interested in having Renesme explain herself to Carmen in her power, like in the way of her powers. Right. So she does. And Carmen is immediately hooked on Renesme. And I love this interaction between the two of them because it's so pure. And, um, and then after that, Carmen immediately sways Eliezer, even though he's a little bit nervous about it. But Eliezer is willing, admittedly, kind of nervously, to let um, Renesme show him. Mm. And then, of course, they all kind of follow suit mm. because this is a movie. <laughs> what? This is a book that <laughs> said he made. Um, I'm just imagining how this goes in the movie. Sorry. Um, Are we all just living in a movie, you know? Please don't. <laughs> this is, it's too late in the night for me to have an existential crisis. Um, and so, of course, they're all won over by Renesme, And it's it's hard to, n- to deny the proof, right? Because right. they hear her heartbeat. Why the fuck am I imagining Hummingbird Heartbeat by Katy Perry in my, oh, my, my mind? Oh, right? my God. Listen, I'm just saying, maybe she read the book and she wrote the song about it. You know, You never know. Tanya is, like, so... We get it, right? You had, you fucked, you had this kid. Why, why are we, like, we get that, like, why are we here? And (laughs) Edward's like, well, your sister uh, (laughs) did this to us. And so they kind of talk about it, kind of recap everything about what we already know about the guard and all that stuff. And so they're like, okay, hands in, 
Hands in. <laughs> um, and go. And, and break. All this stuff. But yeah, so they're all absolutely enamored. Um, Carmen wants to hold Renesmee because they're instantly taken by each other, which I think is very pure. Oh. Um, I, I just, I love it. Um, and for a moment, Bella's like, okay, maybe we can do this. But then she remembers that Alice and Jasper aren't here, which means that they didn't believe that it was going to work. Mm. And so her hope is immediately gone. Oh. And that's how the chapter ends. Oh. So that's where we leave off for this week. And <clears throat> next week is chapter 31, Talented, and chapter 32, which is Company. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, which will hopefully be a little, a little bit better. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. We yeah, have yeah. some amazing patrons to thank this week. Ow, ow! And I was wondering if you would like to thank them this week with me by <laughs> kind of using some reductress article titles with them. Of course, let me pull open reductions. <laughs> okay, so we have our $10 patrons to thank this week. So I'll go ahead and do the first one, which is Rachel Black. So thank you, Rachel. And this week, I'm going to have, let's see. Are you pregnant? Take this quiz since the real test is $23.99. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank Jessica Stanley, also known as this woman's sex fantasy is for her boyfriend to pay her student debt and then die. <gasps> What a moon. <laughs> okay. I would like to thank Katie Weber, otherwise known as... <laughs> um, I watch figure skating once every four <laughs> years, but trust me, I'm an expert. <laughs> I don't fucking love figure skating. I'd also like to thank Jessica Hale, which I think I may have said to you this one, <laughs> but I do love it a lot. It is, this sex playlist also creates the perfect atmosphere for folding laundry. <laughs> That is me as fuck. <laughs> and lastly, I would like to thank M. Zuli. Um, <laughs> this one um, is so fucking funny to me. Okay, is otherwise known as four loofahs that will <laughs> trap your pubes like shrimp in a net. Oh my god. <laughs> it is so fucking funny to me. Okay, wow. so... Thank, Thank you, you Reductress. So <laughs> Thank you, Reductress. You're honestly doing the Lord's work. Yeah. So I have a fan fiction for you this week. Oh, boy. Um, this was published in on November 10th, 2007. <sighs> and it's titled Family Therapy, colon style. Oh, boy. And it was written by VJGM. And the summary is, Carlisle has had it with the children's constant bickering, so he sends the Collins to family therapy. Suicidal Edward, Bella's fear of commitment, Alice addicted to shopping, Rosalie's hostility, Emmett and Jasper's gambling, who will survive. In parentheses, funny. Beautiful. So, so great. This first chapter is titled Quit Your Bickering. And it's from Carlisle's point of view. It had been a long day at the hospital. I had not seen the sun all day long. It had yet to rise when I left this morning and had already set as I slowly walked out of the hospital. With darkness all around me, I saw the lights of my home dancing in the distance. The car glided into the garage and I hurried into the house, anxious to see my wife. There was nothing I liked more at the end of a long day than to spend some quiet time with her. Images of her smiling face filled my head as I threw open the door to the house. Esme. I didn't get another word out before I was verbally attacked by my loving family. Carlyle, look at what the boys did to my wall again. And Esme was pointing at a huge, Emmett-shaped dent in the wall. She had just got done repainting the kitchen from the frying from the flying frying pan incident the night before. Emmett is the most inconsiderate person I have ever met. Edward huffed, and it no doubt had made another off-color comment about Bella. Jasper keeps messing around with my emotions. It's not my fault, Emmett whined. Of course, Jasper got bored and manipulated Emmett into saying something stupid, and Edward overreacted as always. Can you imagine this in Carlisle's point of view? Ugh. 
Oh, Edward, just because you can't control your temper doesn't mean it's Jasper's fault. Take some personal responsibility, Alice chimed in, protecting her husband, even though she knew he was, in fact, to blame. Well, if your husband would stop getting mine into trouble, I would appreciate it, Alice. And you and your little girlfriend need to get some thicker skin, Rosalie hissed as she pointed her finger at Edward and Bella. She still refused to accept Bella as part of this family, and of course, she was the only one allowed to constantly manipulate Emmett's fragile emotional state. <laughs> I'm just going to stop there, because this thing is so fucking good. Um, wow. So, end scene. Beautiful. Uh, but it's, um, it's 18 chapters. Wow. Because this story, my good, good Cody, is 69,000 words. Nice. Nice. <laughs> As we say it for. <laughs> nice. And also <laughs> give it. <laughs> This is an Earbud Media production. You can follow the network on Twitter at Earbud Media. You can also follow this show at Into the Twilight almost everywhere, or check out our Tumblr at intothetwilight.show. Our wonderful artwork is done by Maddie Padilla, who you can find at your Ghost House 44 on Instagram. Our music is done by Eli Krause, who you can find at krausefilms.com. The intro and outro is done by KB underscore underscore Smith on Twitter. You can follow Allie at Into Wild Places, and you can follow me at Dyke Discourse. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye! You've been listening to Earbud Media Production. Earbud Media. Audio for everyone. Hey, Dan. Hey, what's up, John? I just wanted to uh, confirm that we were recording Monday. Yes. Uh, what are we recording for? Oh, it's our new podcast. Our podcast. The the, the Strange Little People one. Strange right? Little People, yeah. Yeah, the one on Earbud Media Productions. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. You can listen to it. The one that we update every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, dude. When we have new guests all the time. Sometimes. Sometimes. Most of the time. Yeah, and we talk about current events and stuff. People should listen to it, right? Uh, yeah. It's, it's really cool. I think people would like it. Um, I mean, you don't have to, but I, mean, I would hope you would. Did you put out the ad yet? The uh, flyers? Y- yeah, I, I'm doing it right now, as we speak. No, you're sitting down. You're no, not... no, this, this is happening right now, as we speak. John, why did my hand just go through you? Oh my god. John. We'll talk about it next week.